Hello, I'm your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we are about to embark on a review of functions. My cat and I, this is Kitty Love. She's not that loving, but that was her name when I got her. Um, you'll meet another one too as we go along this semester. Beautiful, yes. Yes, she'll tell me the answers. All right, I'm going to share the screen and we're going to start on part two of basic functions, the review of basic functions with a little bit of college algebra thrown in at the end just to get you warped up. So here we are in part two, and we're about to operate on functions. Here's a function, f of x equals, f of x equals negative 16x plus four, and g of x equals x squared plus one. What we're being asked to do is find f of negative three, and g of negative 3, and then multiply them together. Remember that this is the multiplication sign. That's all we're being asked to do. This might look a little alien, but it's really okay. All right, f of negative 3. This is code. This is code for put a negative 3 into every x. So that's an equal sign, believe it or not. Since f of x, remember this is a review, which is why I'm explaining more than I might tend to do. Negative 16x plus 4. There's the x that I'm going to put the negative 3 in negative 16x, yes, okay. Times negative three plus four. So f of negative three is going to equal negative 16 times negative three, that's positive 48, plus four, which is 52. Now g of x equals x squared plus one. So g of negative three is going to be negative three squared plus one. When you have a negative number, you must put it in parentheses because you're probably going to be doing this on your calculator and your calculator will give you the wrong answer if you don't put negative numbers in parentheses. Try it. You'll see. Negative three times negative three, that's what negative three squared is, is positive nine. So G of negative three is going to equal positive 9 plus 1, which is 10. So we're being asked to multiply f of negative 3 times g of negative 3, and that's going to equal 52 times 10, which is 520 which is the answer. We have multiplied functions. And we've also evaluated them, by the way. We're being asked to find g of 2 minus f of 2. Well, let's find g of 2 and let's find f of 2 and then let's subtract g of x is x squared 
minus two. G of positive two is two squared. You don't have to put that two in parentheses unless you want to. It's a positive number. Positive numbers do not cause the same problem if you're using a calculator that negative numbers cause. Two times two, well, two squared is two times two. That's four minus two, that equals two. So G of two equals two. f of x equals negative 2x plus 13. So f of 2 is going to equal negative 2 times 2 plus 13. So f of 2 is going to equal negative 4 plus 13 which is going to be positive nine. Now we're being asked to subtract g of two minus f of two. Well, g of two is two, and we're going to subtract nine. So that's negative seven. Now we get to play with some X's. F plus G in parentheses of X equals, in fact, I should try to make that bigger. F plus G in parentheses of X is F of X plus G of X. Well, f of x is negative 2x plus 5. And then we add, add right there. g of x is x squared plus 2. Well, we have two sets of parentheses here, but we're adding. And it's as though there's a positive one in front of each set of parentheses, which makes that look like an H, and I certainly don't want that. So one times negative two X plus five is negative two X plus five plus one times x squared plus two is x squared plus two. And now we combine our like terms and write our uh, polynomial, because that's what this is, in descending order, which means the powers go downhill in value. We'll have x squared minus two x plus five plus two which will be x squared minus 2x plus 7. And there's your answer, 2f plus g of x, which is just a fancy way to write f of x plus g of x. Now we're going to subtract and that's harder. I admit it immediately. So, G minus F of X equals G of X minus F of X. G of X is X squared minus three. minus f of x, which is negative 4x plus 3. Okay, remember, this is like we have a 1 
an understood one in front of this set of parentheses, and an understood one in front of this set of parentheses, but that negative in front of the one turns it into a negative one. So while we have one times x squared minus three is x squared minus three, we're going to have negative one times negative four x, that's plus four x, and negative one times positive three is negative three. And now writing your polynomial in descending order, we're going to have x squared plus 4x minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6. So g minus f of x is this, x squared plus 4x minus 6. All right, here we have another one. I thought we were done. Notice that these functions are capitalized. You have to keep them capitalized. I don't believe they're capitalized for any particular reason, but we have to keep them capitalized if the author of the problem capitalized them. So what we have is f minus g of eight that's going to equal capital F of 8 minus capital G of 8. So let's come over here. If F of X is X squared minus 1, then F of 8 is going to be 8 squared minus 1, which will be F of 8 equals 64 minus 1, which is 63. And g of x equals 1 minus x, so g of 8 is going to equal 1 minus 8, and we already know that's negative 7. So f of 8 is 63, G of 8, now we have to subtract G of 8, and G of 8 is negative 7. You have to be careful when this happens. Negative times negative is positive, so we're going to have 63 plus 7, which is 70. So, F minus G, uh, capital F minus capital G, of 8 equals 70. And, ah, this is interesting. We have f divided by g of x. And what that means is we're going to have capital F of x over g of x. So we'll have x squared minus 4 over 1 minus x. And 1 minus x doesn't go evenly into x squared minus 4. x squared minus 4 factors into x plus 2 times x minus 2. So there's no cancellation that can occur at all. So, excuse me, that's our answer. Now we're going to do something that's college algebra E. College algebra E. Um, like chocolatey. Mm. We are going to compose F and G. We have to talk about what this means. Notice the open circle there. Let me write it more clearly down here, over here. I'll do that. This is F circle G 
of three. What on earth is that? I'm going to tell you. This is F of G of three. So G of three is going to be put into every X in F. Now let's take a look at F. See here, okay. F of X equals negative three X minus one. So F of G of three is going to equal negative three times G of three minus one. All we have to do is find out what g of three is. Let's go here. g of three is three squared minus five because g of x is x squared minus five. Well, 3 squared is 9. This is code for 3 is multiplied by itself twice. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. So now we know that g of 3 is 4. So what f of g of 3 is going to be is f of 4. Negative 3 times 4 minus one, because g of three is four. Negative three times four is negative 12. Negative 12 minus one, basic, basic truth here, neg negative 12 minus one is really negative 12 plus negative one. It's negative 13. So f of g of three is negative 13. Let's write that down more clearly here. F of G, or F circle G, I should say, of three is negative 13. And this is called composition of functions, where you put one function inside another function. We're going to do this again. G of F, that is G circle F of three this time. What that means is this. That G is the outermost function. Whatever is behind is the outermost function. Of F of three. So since G of X is X squared minus two X minus three, G of F of three is going to be F of three squared minus two times F of three minus three. Now, if I only knew what F of three is, but I can find out. F of X, it says up here, up here, is 4x plus 2. So f of 3 is 4 times 3 plus 2. 4 times 3 is 12 
plus 2 is 14. So g of f of 3 is really just g of 14, which means I put a 14 in for every x. 14 squared minus 2 times 14 minus 3. Let's bring up the calculator. That file that I just put in it is called a ROM file. Okay, now 14 is positive, so I really don't need parentheses around it. 14 squared minus 2 times 14 minus 3 is 165. Let's use parentheses just so you don't get confused because that's what I wrote. Parentheses are up here above the 8 and the 9 key, if you don't know. Left paren 14 right paren x squared minus 2 left paren 14 right paren minus 3 is 165. So g of 14 is 1 65. So what all did I do here? Well, because g is behind, I started with g of x. And then f is in front, so I took f of 3 and put that in for all the x's in g. But then I had to find out what f of 3 is. So I did. I found out it's 14. So g of f of 3 is really just g of 14. I know how to do that problem. So g of 14 is 165, but let's write out the whole problem. That means g of f of 3 equals 14. No, it doesn't, you silly goose. It equals 165. Be careful. 165. There's a lot more to composition of functions. We're going to deal with that in week three, I think. Now we're going to talk very, very briefly about inverse functions, which we will also deal more with later. Also in week three. This is a function. I know that because none of the X values repeat. That means x, each x is connected to one y. That makes a function. That is the vertical line test. Well, this is f of x. The inverse is called f inverse of x. And here's what the inverse function is. First, this function f of x is just one, two, three, four points that are not connected. So it's a set. That's what these braces mean at the end. It's a set of four uncontinuous points, unconnected points. Kind of strange, but you can plot four separate points. 
the inverse of that function is also going to consist of four points. The first point, the second point, the third point, the fourth point. Here's the difference. Instead of negative 9, 2 being the point, the point is now 2, negative 9. The x and y coordinates are reversed. That's what an inverse function is. 6, negative 1 becomes negative 1, 6. 8, negative 4 becomes negative 4, 8. And neg 5, negative 5 becomes negative 5, 5. And that's all there is to it. Not quite true, there is more to it. But to the basic idea of an inverse function, this is it. Not hard, not real hard. One more time. Yes, we're going to do the same thing. The inverse function is, and they've already written it for you, how handy. 5, negative 9, negative 1, 2, uh, negative 1, 1. That is 1 and negative 1 are reversed. Negative 2 and negative 3 are reversed, so now they're negative 3 and negative 2. And 5 and negative 5 are reversed, negative 5 and 5. You've got your function right there. You've got your inverse function right here. And we will also be visiting those more in week three. I'm pretty sure. Talk to you later. I think, let's make sure I'm done. Yes, that's all there is to it. Talk to you later, bye-bye.